My name is Lita Pezderic and I'm passionate about the landscape and, um, and having a balanced use of the landscape. I want to raise my children in, in an environment that we can all recreate in and still feel that we left it better than we found it. Now I'm Norm Elford and I'm Lita's dad. And I asked my dad to come today and talk with me because um, a lot of the memories that I have of the foothills and, and Porcupine Hills and um, Upper Old Man, those are from my, my childhood and it was my parents taking me back there, me and my brothers out, you know, to go camping and hiking. One of my favorite memories of the Porcupine Hills was actually on prob what is the Whaleback uh, area now. It's the first time I can remember showing Lita how to fish, catch and release. Um, there were foamy, foam water just right next to the logs and so I'd tell her to throw her line in into the foam and just let it drift under. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and if we caught that fish and let him go, we could come back the next day and catch him again. I don't remember, I mean, growing up and, and going camping out in that area, it wasn't until I think more of my adult life that I started noticing changes as we would go back out into that country and the equipment has changed and that's what I've seen um, from as a kid right up to um, about, I don't know, 2007 about is when I started noticing a real change. And that's when I first had my, you know, my son and took him out into the back country. And now I, you know, I, I worry that I can't take him out there as much. Part of it was the peace and quiet and the, uh, just the nature part of it, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, whereas now it's quite a bit more motorized and I, I like motorized vehicles just like the next guy, but it's, it's taking away from, from the peace and solitude. I have friends, I have, I run in these circles of people that, that um, they go, well, no, we're, we're just, we're staying on the trail. And I go, well, what, what trail? Was it, <laughs> what, do you know if that trail was made yesterday? You, you think that that's just the only trail, but the amount of linear disturbance on that landscape has just increased. I, I can't even imagine how many, you know, how much, how many more trails are out there than there once was. Yeah, the threats to the Porcupine Hills and Livingston area, I think is just overuse. We've reached our capacity, our carrying capacity. We may have even gone over that, I think. Without some sort of limitations, there's no one saying, okay, that's enough. What I'm hoping is that we can, with some land use planning, and getting all the different stakeholders to the table, we can come up with some real neat solutions that, that work out for everybody. Land use planning is, is the key to allowing just that. I do want to see that, that habitat protected um, and conserved, but I also, want to, I also want to protect the heritage that's out there, the ranching communities and um, the memories that, that we've had growing up, I don't want that to be lost. We want our kids and grandkids to have you know, the same kind of experiences that we had, and so you know, we have to make sure that it is uh, available to them in the future. If we can educate uh, the young people that are coming up to value the land and appreciate the fact that they can go there, that it is, if they had a sense of ownership maybe they would uh, keep it more pristine. The landscape needs a voice. And at this present moment, there's nothing saying how much recreation or activity is too much in that area. We've got forestry management plans. We have grazing plans. We don't have a recreational plan or a linear disturbance plan. And I think that's critical. Is it gonna make everyone happy? No, <laughs> definitely not. But what I think it's gonna do is it's gonna provide a future for that area that will, you know, it'll protect it. And hopefully someday the, the few people that are gonna be really upset by some of these restrictions perhaps um, will eventually see why it was necessary.